The first tip that allows you to dominate in Season 17 is making sure to use Ballistic's Tactical, which overheats one player's guns and makes them take damage as they shoot against players, against people who are on controller, or players on Power Legends who typically are played by controller users, such as Horizons or Valkyries, as they are most likely to do significant damage, and stopping their ability to shoot, if even for a moment, puts the fight right back in your favor. And if you like that tip, here are 24 other tips that will keep you farming in Season 17. The new addition to the firing range, namely the death boxes, actually let you practice armor swaps inside of the game. While you can't actually use it specifically for armor swapping because there are so many guns in there that it just gets in the way, you can still practice the feeling, the timing and the pointer positioning by aiming your cursor at the center of the R301 and the Spitfire's row. Building off of that, it is also worth noting that with the addition of Ballistic, the armor will now be one row lower if you do try armor swapping off a of Ballistic's death box since he has three guns instead of just the two. You can still get into third person in the new firing range by going to the back corner all the way back and to the right of the firing range by the water. Crouch while facing this wall, obviously without a weapon in your hands, change the character, and that's it. If you get hit by Ballistic's smart bullet and receive the heat up debuff, this effect will last for up to 12 seconds, and Ballistic will try to force you to pop it at a time that suits him. So instead of running away or hiding, quickly step behind cover and shoot wherever, like maybe the wall or the floor, to pop the overheat handshake early on your own terms. Another quick tip for Ballistic uses his sling system and his ultimate. Any weapon that's on the sling cannot take any attachments whatsoever, and seeing as Ballistic's ultimate will upgrade whatever gun he has on his sling to gold quality with faster reloads and infinite ammo, it does make sense to use weapons that benefit from this the most. The first one that came to mind was the Devotion, but you're actually better off using a high DPS weapon with a small magazine such as the R99, as this will benefit the most from the faster reloads and allow you to do as much damage as possible. With that in mind, remember you cannot put any golden weapons or care package weapons on Ballistic Sling. That being said, you might be interested to know that using his ultimate with a Rampage or a Sentinel on the sling will charge it up for you as well. As for the changes to World's Edge, there is no longer an updraft coming out of the lava in fragments. This means that you can jump into the lava and survive, there's even small islands and things that you can stand on, but you can even maybe tank some damage if you're trying to escape or surprise an enemy. With the new season, we're getting a weapon mastery system which allows you to unlock unique badges by completing unique weapon challenges. Respawn believes that mastering one weapon will take about 80 to 120 hours. But I must warn you before you go on this journey, maxing out the weapon mastery does not give you a unique mastery gold, you know, diamond skin. There's a legendary loot tick with some skins for that specific weapon. So if that's what you were expecting, don't waste your time. Just, just don't. But if you do want to waste some time, mastering every single weapon will give you this cool animated banner frame. If you do want to level up your weapon mastery, for example if you're looking for that spicy banner, you can do so most efficiently simply by playing the game and running around with the weapon in question in your hands, rather than actually using it to kill people. You can also level it up a lot faster by playing mixtape rather than battle royale. When it comes to the rank system, we're seeing a complete overhaul with the hidden MMR system in addition to rewarding positioning. Keep in mind that every game has hidden bonuses that you will get to know about at the end of the game, so make sure that you're playing the game to the fullest for optimal gains and don't just sit away and don't just sit away from keyboard in a corner while waiting for the zone to close. I'm aware of what Sweet Dream is doing and everyone's doing the damage to Predator or whatnot, but if everyone's doing it at the same time, all of a sudden going for positioning or ratting won't even be that good. So try to punish the rats if anything. Because at the moment, you can also get hundreds of LP just by walking out into the zone and crafting medkits, so. Whatever works for you, I guess. If a Ballistic aims his tactical smart bullet at you and it starts heading your way, you will get a very visible warning about a missile being locked on. The missile is very slow, and if you get behind cover and wait for a few seconds, it will hit the wall instead of you. The new survival item Evac Tower is a great way to get around the map and can even be combined with Valkyrie's ultimate to essentially get two balloons worth off at the same time. Keep in mind that using it leaves you vulnerable and that the tower can be destroyed both by you and your enemies. It's also worth noting that if the evac tower has been bled down to one health, it won't actually go down as long as you're using it or I guess if an enemy shoots it. The evac tower starts with thousands of health and generally cannot be broken in a reasonable amount of time. If an enemy is deploying in front of you, shoot them as they go up instead of the balloon. The crate version of the L-Star is insanely good this season, with every bullet dealing 25 damage against shields thanks to the disruptor rounds. 
and you being able to deal devastating damage with piercing rounds. Make sure to pick it up and use it for enough entry damage to crack the fights open. The 3030 now has a larger projectile size when fully charged, which gives you extra incentive to take that extra second and really aim in when starting to shoot at an enemy, as it's now way easier to actually land that shot. After playing around with this, I actually think it's much better to just take that extra second to charge your shot up, because it's much easier to hit it and deal consistent damage. If you're playing ballistic and if your ultimate is active and you either bring out another weapon or you're, you know, put the current weapon down and run with your hands out, you can always press the ultimate key again to bring the golden weapon right back out. Seeing as the triple take also received quite a large buff to its overall handling, damage and performance, not to mention one of my largest gripes about it, that being the team economy, where it now only requires one bullet to fire instead of three, it might actually be worth it to pick it up for consistent damage across both closer and the longer ranges, rather than just at the very start of the game. Without having an opportunity to play around with it too much just yet, I'd even consider using it over certain other marksman weapons. The R99 has one less bullet per magazine, but should still be one of the best weapons to use in the game, especially if you are a ballistic or have a ballistic on your team. Despite initially being in the patch notes for the new season, which I did cover on this channel, it turns out that you can still scan enemies through catalyst walls as Seer, Bloodhound, or whatever. So either use this yourself, or at the very least don't let yourself get caught thinking that you're safe after a scan goes off. The charge rifle was also hit by nerfs, not only allowing you to fire 3 shots per magazine instead of the 4. It also has a lower spawn rate, but all that does is ensure that you get an even bigger advantage if you do find one. I'd still argue that with good trigger discipline, the charge rifle is as good as ever. And due to the spawn rate, there will be way less of them in the game to contest you, so it's definitely still a very worthy pickup. Scissor Ultimate, the Dark Veil no longer displays scan highlights or diamonds through it. Catalyst might even be more of a worthy pickup in Season 17, as there is no counterplay to the wall in most situations. Since the Assault Bin Smart Loot gains have been adjusted to stop you from practically getting guaranteed purple or golden attachments, when dropping you should start by looting through the entire point of interest before opening the Assault Bin to ensure that you get the best loot possible. And even then it's... Not very good. Keep in mind that as long as you have a support legend on your team, anyone on the team can craft back your teammates banners, even if the support player himself is dead. If you're playing Ballistic or one of your teammates are playing Ballistic, make sure to reload all of your guns before the end of his ultimate, just to make sure to use some of that infinite ammo pool to top yourselves up. Also, this doesn't work for red guns like the Kraber. Ballistic probably sees a power spike at the very start of the game as you guarantee a very high level weapon and other benefits thanks to his ultimate. Make sure to give as many ultimate accelerants to Ballistic as you can to give yourself the highest chance of winning a fight in the early game. If you're playing Maggie and you have a Ballistic on your team, the passive Warlord's Ire, which gives you extra movement speed when holding a shotgun in your hands, apparently also stacks with Ballistic's ultimate, giving you even more movement speed. And those were plenty of tips to get you started in Season 17. Make sure that you've subscribed to catch the rest of the useful videos about the new season coming for the rest of the week. Check out the video on the screen, and I will see you all tomorrow.